Coming up on Friday night on Access TV, it is CES MMA 32. We are now joined by one of the men that you're going to be able to see on the main card. It is Josh Diekman. It takes on Ashley Gooch. Josh, appreciate your time. Obviously, it's, it's been a little while since we, we've talked. I know personally, professionally, this is the you know, last uh, year has been very tough for you. But in, in terms of your MMA career, how would you characterize 2015? Uh, like you said, it was tough, man. I, uh, I don't know. I had like, oh, I mean, since the past year has been tough. Uh, I've had three knee surgeries. I broke my hands. Uh, I still need to repair a tendon in one of my wrists. I just, I'm just tired of surgery. Uh, I haven't been able to train like I'd like to. Lately, it's been better. Uh, it, I don't know. It's been a year of reflection. That's for sure. Maybe, hopefully, uh, growth or, I don't know, man. I just, you know, I'm done. I'm still standing. I'm still swinging. You know, my eyes are open and I'm seeing things coming. So I don't really know. I mean, it's hard. It's just hard for me to put it into words. It's been so much, you know, I'm just glad it's over. Let's just say that. Hey, there was nobody happier to see that ball drop yesterday than me. That's for sure. Uh, in, in terms of, I, I remember heading into your Raphael Butler fight, and maybe I, I was wrong, and, and you can tell me if I was. D- did I get the sense that you were maybe considering that being your final fight? No. Uh, I mean, like I said, I'm I'm 39, dude. I'm going to be 40 in September. I mean, I, I mean, every fight could be your last fight. I don't care if you're 22. You know, that's that's the game we play, man. This is the life I chose, like. It can, anything could happen, you know, I could break my neck, I could do something, you never know, like, you know, I just, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fight Friday, and then I'm going to live on Saturday morning, I'm not looking that far down the road, because I, when I do that, I don't see shit in front of me, and I trip all over it, you know what I mean, I'm just going to kind of watch where I put my feet, and that's it, I'm going to just, just ride this wave out and, until it just beaches me, I'm just going to get up, hand my board to somebody, and I'm going to walk away. I don't know when that is. In, in terms of, of this fight coming up here against Ashley Gooch, he, he's a guy that, that's been on access before. W- what do you think of Ashley here? I, I don't I don't know, man. I mean, he's, he looks tough. Like I said, he hasn't lost a fight in three or four years. He seems to be getting better. You know, he's my age, but he look, he doesn't have as many fights, so he's probably not as beat down. I, I, I try not to think, man. It just it, it, it doesn't serve me well. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm just going to go and fight with him. And hopefully I'm a good test for him and, uh, you know, as he for me. Or I just need to fight, man. I, I just Fighting gives me a focus. Like, it brings, I don't know, it's just, it's just like every time my life's in shambles, I just have a fight. And then it seems like everything kind of, or maybe I gain clarity or, or I stop self. I don't, it, it just sort of brings me back together. And it's it's not it's not about I don't fight I like we spoke about last time, it's not about wins and losses for me you know, at one time it was it, it was about feeding my ego and uh, you know uh, creating a perception of myself for other people and and it's just not like that anymore dude it, it, like I said to you last time it, I I fight it's about like how you do it and and like how you go after it and I think now like I I fight to, uh, how do I say this? Let me see. I, I'm fighting in the hopes that for growth, um, like I did last time, but I, I failed miserably, dude. Like, you know, I told you the last time that we had spoken that I didn't have anything else to lose, but I did, man. I lost my best friend, like, uh, two weeks later. And, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, all right. And I, I lost integrity self-respect I made I made some very poor decisions since then that, that have affected like the, my circle of friends and and uh I'm not proud of myself you know I but, but I have to live with that and um I'm hoping you know like this time <laughs> I, I, I I maybe I can gain some of that growth and, and some of the um you know, perspective and, and thing and just get my head screwed on straight this year that, that's like my only constitution I just want to get this thing screwed on. Fighting just doesn't matter either way, like, because I'm never going to make any money or make a, you know what I'm saying? I never have. It's not why I do this. Like, it's not about, that's why I don't fight that often, you know? It's not, it's, I'm not your typical fighter. I just, 
I am a fighter, so I fight. Like, if I don't have a, a battle to fight, then it doesn't make sense to breathe. Like, I, I need something. Well, I guess I'm still looking for it. I don't know. This is going to be your first fight in CES uh, since 2013. What, is, what does CES mean to you? I like those guys, man. Like, like Jimmy Jr. and Pat Sullivan and, and all the guys in the back, like Silent Bob and... TV and all that. They're just good guys, man. They're just normal guys. I knew, I knew some of them guys from the gyms before CES even had, because they've had a boxing uh, division forever, you know. They just started MMA in maybe like 2010, 8, 9, something like that. And I knew a lot of those guys before. They're just good guys, I think. They always treat me real good. They take care of all of their fighters, and they make sure we all have tickets. You just, they're just good guys. I like them guys. They're, they're like small town boys who just I don't know. I like them. They always treated me really. In my experience, like I said, most of these promoters preach this family bullshit, and then they're full of shit, man. You know, they don't give you your... They're always cutting corners and trying to take from you. And all a promoter is, dude, is it's that kid at school that, that he's like a, like, a, like a professional fight starter. You know, like, hey, I'm Josh and Jason are going to fight after school. Like, picks the fight, and then he takes the bets, and that's all a promoter is, dude. We, I know this, you know what I mean? Like... They use us, we use them. But these guys, I, I feel, in my experience, it's been a little more personal. Like, you know, they, they call and, hey, man, like, they're just, it seems like they care. Like, it's about more than just fighting. I, I don't know, that makes me feel good, and I like fighting for them. And, you know, this is a, 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 a career, a sport, however we want to look at it, where you, you may end up fighting guys and you become great friends after that. And for you, that's what happened with Mike Wessel. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of crazy because, I mean, obviously it was a very brutal win that you had over Mike. But, yeah. uh, but I still feel better. <laughs> but, but to you, have I mean, you flip a coin, Jason, that's me, though. You know, that's our sport, dude. Mikey punches me first. That's me. Uh, you know, laying on the ground. That, 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 that's, the, that's what's cool about this, man. The best guy don't always win, man. It, Sorry to cut you off. No, but I was just saying, I mean, for what have, what have you learned from Mike in getting that relationship? This is a guy that, that's been on the biggest stage. What have you kind of learned from him, uh, whether it's in the cage or out of the cage? What I've learned from Mike is that, he, for one, he's a crazy bastard, which I like. Uh I've learned a lot from Mike, and I could go on for probably a day or two, but um, Mike played in, like, the NFL, and, you know what I mean, he's played, he's been an athlete on the highest level for, for most of his life. Um, I learned from him, like, um, just basically what I just told you about promoters being, like, things like that, like, these people, like, it's a business, Josh, like, you can't take so many things personal there's a business to this they're going to use you but you need to learn how to use them back and it, it's you know it's it's sad but it's a dog eat dog world man and it's fucking sad but if you don't play by those rules you're going to get eaten you know you you can stand and want to stand on a high moral ground but but it's just you're going to get ran over dude you have to learn to like play the game i guess like in any in any endeavor whatever part of life you know what i'm saying this is just like like I said, this is the life I chose. Don't ask me why. But, um, there, you know, if you chose to be a lawyer, you, there, there's certain game you have to play there. If you chose to be a cook or anything, you know what I mean, a carpenter, you name it, there, there's a fucking game you have to play. And if you don't, like, chances are there's a small percentage of people that do it their own way, but the masses, the majority of us have to exist within that system. And you just need to find the best way to do that and, you know, not stack the deck to your advantage, just to make sure you get what you need to survive. And I'm, I'm learning that, you know. I think that's maybe what fighting has been for me. Just it's going to help me in my next chapter of life, I'm hoping, <laughs> because if this is it, I'm fucked. <laughs> but, um, I mean, that, that's, that's like, that's what, how I feel, or, 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 or what I hope, I think, I, you know. Earlier in the show, I had Pat Sullivan on, and I asked him, I said, you've got one heavyweight matchup on here. Is a heavyweight title coming? And he kind of alludes to that, and this fight play, plays a big role in what's going to happen with that championship. Is, is that right now the goal for you to, to win the CES title? Or I, I know there's a lot of people out there that are petitioned for you to get that Kimbo fight. Yeah, I mean, that's my goal, dude. Like, 
I had at one point, Jason, every title around here. I mean, when we started, I had my first fight 14, 13, 14 years ago, man. You know, a lot of these guys were still, like, friggin' in diapers, which makes me laugh, you know, because I've been around a long time, and uh, those titles don't mean shit to me, dude. They're, they're only worth, like, what, what, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've, I've done all that. I've fed my ego. Look at my, my cats lay on the fucking things, dude. They're furry on the underside. They love them. They're cat beds, dude. You know what I mean? They smell like cat ass. I haven't looked at one of those fucking things in years. Like, I don't care about shit like that anymore. It just doesn't matter. I, I would like to fight Kimbo for growth because I feel like he's a guy that, that kind of maybe came up like I did, you know? Like, fighting, you know, like, just, he's a fighter. Like, there's, there's a difference between a fighter and a guy who learns how to fight. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of people that walk into the gym and learn how to fight, but I grew up fighting. I had to. You know, it was either that or I was going to get, you know, I got my ass kicked a lot. You know, that's, that's why I, you see me when people hit, like, I go after them, like, because it stirs all that shit up. And I like that. You know what I mean? Like, I feel the most at peace when the bullets are flying and it's chaos. And, like, coaches just don't understand that. They're like, why don't you use, like, your legs? And I'm like, well, fuck you, because I don't want to. Because I like this shit. You know what I mean? I want to. I want to. I want to be in there. Hit me. I want to hit you back. Like, that's that's fighting, man. It's not jabbing and inside leg kicking, stepping to a right hand. Fuck you. That's for pussies, man. Nobody wants to see that shit. I want to go out there and fight. I want to bleed. I want to wanna test myself. I want to see, like, <clears throat> when shit goes bad, how am I going to do? Am I going to fucking quit? Because I've done that before. You know, or am I going to bite down on my fucking mouthpiece and fight back because I've done that too? So, I don't know. I'm emotional, as usual. What else is fucking new? But I just, that, that, that's what fighting is to me. Like, am I going to try to use, you know, things that we've implemented Friday? Yeah, but you know it's what's going to fucking happen, you know. <laughs> it's going to come a point where we're standing there and I'm just going to start winging. That, I mean, that's that's what I do, like... Fuck it, why change now? I'm 40, dude. I, I got a couple fights left. And one of them, I'd like to have Kimbo. And, and, and you know what, Jason? No matter how old I ever get, like, I'll be 80. I have always one good fight left in me. And I'm saving it for fucking Tyler King. And I want him to know that. And he does know that. I don't care if we're 80 and we fight in a nursing home. I hate that cocksucker. And I'm always going to have one more fight in me. But I will save it for him. But as far as professionally goes, I don't know how much longer I can justify doing this, man. Like, the, 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 the juice isn't worth the squeeze. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I don't make enough money doing this. Like, I don't, I'm estranged from my family. I don't have, like, everything that I feel I should. You know what I mean? I've given a lot and gotten not a lot back. And, and, and not just fighting, like, in life, you know, I'm always so quick to, to help somebody, but, but I'm the one who suffers, because, look, I'm a fucking mess, dude, like, I don't have time to work on myself, and that's, like, kind of what I'm trying to do now, and I found, like, since I've done that, like, a lot of those people that I was helping and, you know, said what a great guy I'm like they're they're not around anymore because they're like fucking ticks man they they latch onto you and they they suck you dry and then once they don't get what they need out of you anymore they just go to the next host you know what I'm saying am I making it I'm I'm babbling again no you're making complete sense but let me ask you this because I I've I I know there's issues between you and Tyler why do you want that fight so bad because he's a bully man and I don't like him you know like all right he went around, I fought him, he won, whatever. I'm not going to make any excuses. There's a million why he did. I'm not making a fucking excuse. I suited up, I was ready. I got in there, I was ready to fight, he won. He agreed a man's, a, a gentleman's agreement to fight me again, and he's had a series of excuses since then. He threw a friggin' drink at me. He just, he's just a bully, dude. He, 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 he. What did he do? He, re- he got his ass kicked, so he knocked him out, which always happens. He retired. He comes back. He's, like, calling retired fighters on their Facebook. Hey, you want to fight? You want to fight? When, like, me and Banana, Johnny Johnson, Greg Rabello, everybody will fight. Nobody likes this kid. He, he is just the epitome of arrogance and, and self-absorption. And I just don't, I don't like him, dude. I hate him. 
And, and, it, and it bothers me to say that, that I let hate into my heart like that, and I, and I give somebody this kind of control over me, but I just don't like him. When I look at that guy, I see every fucking bully that ever picked on me or somebody that I cared about, and I, I just hate him. I just want to get after him, and he won't do it. Like, he's just, he knows that he's got me this bad, but you know what? It doesn't matter, because someday I might bump into him somewhere else, and it's going to happen, dude. It's better for him if there's a referee and a unified set of rules that I'll agree to, because... I just don't like this kid, man. He's just hes just an asshole, and I think he hurts people, and he's just mean on purpose, and he's a bully. He's like 6'8", and he wants to fight 225. He just, he's just a bully, dude. That's the bottom line. It just really strikes a chord with me, and I don't like him. And he knows it, and he plays me like a violin, but I'm going to get him. I will wait. And there's going to be a point where he has no other option. It's either fight Josh or don't fight. And, and I'm hoping that his ego is as such that it, that will force him to do so. In terms of this fight on Friday night at CESM May 32, is the best advice for fans, whether in attendance or, or watching on Access TV, just don't blink? Always. You know the deal, man. I mean, I can sit here all day and, like I said, I'm going to try to move, which I'm going to, man. I'm going to try to do the things that the people that, that, that work with me and spend the time with me, I owe that to them, you know? Like, they've spent this time with me teaching me these things. I need to try them. But, you, I mean, the it's just, it's going to end, you know. Everybody already knows. Like, we're going to, and that guy doesn't seem like he, he takes too many backward steps either, you know. It seems like he comes forward, he hits hard. So one of us is going to be flat on our ass probably two minutes in, something, if, if I don't know. I'm hoping it ain't one of those boring, you know. I'd rather just go out there and win a slug, or what the hell, I'd rather lose a slug fest than win a snore fest, but any, any day. And, of course, this fight will be a part of CES MMA 32 on Friday night on Access TV. Josh, as always, appreciate the time, and I always appreciate the, the candid answers that you give me, man. I thank you, Jason.